Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder, and I'm here to help you rock your hormones and feel great in your body so that you can reclaim more energy, vitality, and joy and become the CEO of your health. Let's jump on in. There are essentially two options that you have after eating dinner at the end of a long day. The first one is probably one of the most satisfying things you can do, and that is curl up on the couch, turn on your favorite show, and settle in for the night. Now, the show that we are settling into right now is Succession. The second option is walking it out for 20 to 30 minutes after dinner, 30 minutes being the most ideal, and that is about 15 minutes each way on that walk. Now, I have a feeling you know which one extends longevity. Hands down, I believe that walking after dinner is the best thing that you can do for your metabolic health and your overall health. And guess what? There is a ton of science to back it up, which we're about to get into in just a second. Now, we all know that walking itself, it's its own solid form of gentle exercise. I love walking so, so much. So the idea that we can just leverage walking to support our metabolic health on a daily basis just sounds so wonderful to me. But what we know is that the bigger bang for your buck is doing it after any meal that you have. It is huge in terms of benefits, including boosting your metabolism, aiding in digestion, and lowering stress levels. And who doesn't need to lower their stress levels at the end of the night with a little bit of a walk, right? Now, there are a lot of benefits to walking after eating, also known as postprandial exercise. It lowers your glycemic index significantly, blunts a blood sugar response, reduces insulin resistance, improves intestinal movement, promotes better sleep, and boosts your blood flow. So what I want to do is I want to share with you the top five benefits that are so compelling. It will inspire you to start walking after meals, even if it can't be dinner, right? Let's get in where we fit in here. Number one, you're not going to be surprised what my number one benefit is that is improved fasting blood sugar and insulin sensitivity, basically creating metabolic flexibility. Probably the benefit that I have been the most excited about Because let's be honest, we all know someone in our family who is struggling with metabolic dysfunction. There's over 150 million people in this in this country, in the United States alone, that is struggling with metabolic dysfunction and blood sugar issues. And so if we could reverse some of that by simply walking after a meal, sign me up. Now, because this is the biggest benefit of the five that I'm going to be talking about today, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into the research to back this up because I am all about getting as many people on this train as possible. So current evidence suggests that exercising in the mid postprandial phase of the feeding cycle, which tends to fall between 30 minutes to 120 minutes after eating. So basically, let's say you ate at 6.30 to 8 p.m., 8.30 is really the best time and most effective time to tame a glucose peak, right? And I think we can all pull that off. Now, a 2016 review examined 39 papers, which encompassed a collective of 600 participants with various metabolic conditions like diabetes, prediabetes, and obesity, and it also encountered people without any diagnosed condition. Now, the study authors concluded that exercising 30 minutes after eating is the ideal time to curb glucose levels. The reason exercise timing matters has to do with the mechanics of glucose uptake. See, when you eat, glucose enters your bloodstream from your gut, raising the blood sugar concentration. But when you exercise right away, that glucose is quickly taken up by the muscle tissue, bringing blood sugar levels back down. I'm talking about it can make a significant difference. Now, the body's glycemic balance depends on how quickly meal-derived glucose arrives in the blood and at the rate at which exercise draws upon this fuel, right? That exercise can take up that glucose into the muscles. For that reason, the type of food that you eat can also affect the ideal timing for your workout or your walk, whatever you want to call it. So a 2019 randomized clinical trial looked at the optimal window for exercise around eating a 500 calorie liquid meal. Now, the thing about liquid meals is it's absorbed super fast into the body, faster than solid food, and research recruited 48 adults to examine how their glucose response changed when they performed 30 minutes of physical activity at various times before they drank this liquid meal or after eating or no exercise at all, right? So they looked at all these various components. In this case, moving immediately after the meal 
was the clear winner. Walking and body weight exercises improved glucose levels significantly. Even standing up after they drank the 500 calorie liquid meal had a minor benefit. Now, participants saw no impact on glucose exposure or variability when exercised before, 30 minutes after, or two minutes after consumption. So if you are having a fruit smoothie or an Asahi bowl or a milkshake or a ice cream cone for breakfast or lunch, or you're just absorbing some really fast absorbing carbohydrates, think fruit, dessert, anything processed or contains sugar or refined flour, you may want to get moving literally right away. Like for example, if you are going to go and have ice cream with your family, the recommendation is like do what the Italians do, right? They are literally scooping their gelato as they're walking down the street post dinner. So that's what I recommend. And actually my husband and I, we tested this theory almost a year ago when we both had our continuous glucose monitors. We went and got a dairy-free milkshake from this amazing ice cream place locally down the street from our house. And then we went on a beach walk for 45 minutes. And instead of a normal glucose spike, for me, I usually see a 75 to 100 milligram per deciliter spike when I eat something like sugar because it's basically a liquid, it's straight liquid sugar, right? It hits the bloodstream so fast. But we started, we got the milkshake, we started drinking it together and we walked for 45 minutes. You know, we could have probably just walked for 30 minutes, but I saw my blood sugar spike was about 50 milligrams per deciliter, smaller, less of a spike than it would have been had we just sat and had a conversation or watched a TV show after we drank that milkshake. So I've seen this personally, and I've noticed that if we can get moving literally immediately after a shake or a smoothie or whatever, it makes the biggest difference. Now, again, that's with a very sugary, massive, like a frappuccino, something that's gonna really raise your blood sugar levels very quickly. Because it happens so fast, you need to respond very quickly. Now, if we were to have dinner, and it was sweet potatoes and salmon and a big salad with avocado, that 30 minutes after dinner to an hour and a half after dinner is really that ideal time. So the biggest takeaways from the most current evidence shows us, whenever possible, move your body after eating. Doing this helps mobilize post meal glucose to fuel physical activity and curb the spike that you may experience if you were inactive and chilling on the couch. Next, walking after eating for 30 minutes within a six hour window of that meal is good for any standard healthy person, although sooner is likely better. I recommend 30 minutes to two hours after a meal is the best time. And if you wanna create a habit, that's really a good time, right? You finish your meal, you kind of clean things up and you get out and walk with the family, walk the dog. We walk the baby in the stroller. That's what we're doing right now. After finishing a meal, taking a brisk walk for about 30 minutes is an excellent habit to adopt. So 30 minutes is the ideal amount of time that you want to be walking after your meal. Alternatively, just walking briskly for a minute or five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes will significantly lower that glucose and insulin spike and help to create more stable metabolic levels in the body. The other recommendation is to set a timer every half hour to remind yourself to get up even just for a minute or two and move around the house. So if you can recall my last episode with Dr. Casey Means, and I'm forgetting which episode number it was, she talked about what her day-to-day looked like as one of the founders of Levels Health, the amazing metabolic app that you can use to track your blood sugar and your metabolic health. And what she said she did is she walks after every meal, her big meals, lunch and dinner, but then throughout the day, she does these two to three minute walks around the house and that has been the best thing that has helped her to maintain ideal blood sugar levels throughout the day. So again, it doesn't have to be, we're talking about, you know, small changes that make a massive difference over time. So to me, this is like the best bang for your buck that I can think about. With that said, number two, the second benefit is improved digestion. So once you're done eating, your body gets to work and all of the different nutrients from the food gets broken down in the gut, right? In that small intestine. Proteins, electrolytes, water, vitamins, carbohydrates, fats, other nutrients are absorbed and transported through the body to wherever they are needed 
cells around the body. This process can be approved by walking after eating as walking has been found to play a significant role in reducing gastric emptying time by reducing that time that food moves through the gastrointestinal tract. Basically, it speeds up peristalsis, which results in faster digestion and less bloating after eating. So by moving your body, you are helping things move within your body as you process the food that you just ate, which is especially helpful if you tend to get sluggish after a meal. So super amazing benefits for improving digestion. Number three, decreasing stress. So we all know that exercise is one of the best ways to reduce stress. And my favorite form of exercise to reduce stress and overwhelm is walking. Most importantly, I love walking on the beach or hiking in nature. I've always found that my best ideas and my greatest creativity comes from when I am walking in nature because I am just walking away from all of the endless tasks of the day, from my desk that's got a ton of to-do lists, and my mind is able to just be clear and happy. It's like a creativity rest for like endless ideas and possibilities. I'm not sure if that's the same for you as well. We also know that when you exercise, your body releases endorphins, which are those amazing, yummy, feel-good chemicals that create that natural high. And as a side benefit, significantly reduces the release of stress hormones, also known as catecholamines, and rewires the brain to reduce the stress response patterns over time. So walking can actually literally create a proactive response in how you manage stress down the road. So walking and breath work to me are the most powerful ways to move yourself out of feeling stressed and overwhelmed. Now, whether you are taking a casual walk or a brisk walk after each meal, just note that that feel good, one of those feel good hormones is serotonin. Walking helps promoting serotonin levels, which is a wonderful neurotransmitter that promotes good sleep, helps regulate appetite, improves learning and memory, and increases positive feelings like joy. So even an easy walk after a meal can let you reap the same calm boosting benefits as a meditation. Walking after meals create a calming effect on the body, which can improve your mood, focus, and concentration. And to me, that is a win-win. But we still got two more. Number four, boost blood flow. So when you're walking, you are letting your body pump more blood throughout it, which is essentially beneficial after a meal because your muscles, your brain and your heart are beyond grateful for that extra blood flow to those organs, right? Because we know that blood flow to those critical organs are so important. Walking induces blood flow to the limbs and the organs. It improves better circulation due to movement and it increases a healthier vascular system, which allows for that critical nutrients to go to the bones, muscles, and obviously the organs in the body and makes everything run much more efficiently. So yes, we always need some blood flow happening. You can feel it when blood flow hits the brain, when blood flow hits the lungs and the heart. It just feels so good, like your body's alive. And number five, One that we could all use a little bit of help with, and this is improved sleep. While you might be tempted to curl up and fall asleep after a big meal, I know, I feel you, a short walk will actually allow you to have better sleep. And I don't know about you, but I'm always down for better sleep. So walking after eating promotes a faster and deeper sleep as serotonin, that feel-good hormone that we talked about earlier, is a precursor to melatonin. So taking the time to clock some steps after dinner in the evening sets your circadian rhythm up for success by naturally boosting serotonin levels and melatonin levels and helping your digestive system digest your food quicker, giving your body more time to rest for bed. As far as I'm concerned, these are all big wins, right? I'm hoping that you are feeling my top five compelling benefits for adding 20 to 30 minutes of exercise, aka walking after your meals. I recommend starting with one meal, ideally the one that's the easiest for you to add a walk to, even if it's just for 10 to 15 minutes. I mean, it all is a win. It's all a benefit, right? Right now for me, I walk twice a day. We walk in the morning before we jump into work and we also walk around sunset so that we can walk and watch the sunset over the ocean at our local beach, which is Beacons Beach in Encinitas, California. These are the easiest times for me to walk. Usually we average about 30 to 40 minutes each walk. And I also typically work out in the morning before I break my fast. I'm usually on the Peloton or I'm doing a weight workout, just really depending on where I'm at. I treat the exercise different than the walks 
because the walks are really family time, stress reducing time, relaxation time, and beautiful sunset time versus getting my, you know, 30 minute workout in, which is typically strength training. So just a heads up, like you're going to figure out what works best for you. Now, I will say it doesn't always work out that we walk after dinner because it really depends on when dinner is at the house. With the baby, as you know, sometimes it can just be tricky. And my word for this year because of all of that is surrender. I just surrender to what, you know, what life brings us and the baby on the day to day. If you have a more consistent work and meal schedule, I invite you to adjust a bit to fit in a walk after meals. So if your schedule is not consistent like mine, just get in where you fit in, right? Like we do. Remember, the goal is to move your body as much as possible throughout the day. And I'm sure you've heard the phrase, which is important to remind you of, is sitting is the new smoking. Many of us are sitting at our desks all day long, in and out, and it's contributing to a sluggish metabolism. So the more that we can remedy this on a daily basis, the better for our health. And this is why I love non-exercise activity thermogenesis, also known as NEAT, Non-exercise activity thermogenesis or the energy that you expend from general daily activities has a significant impact on the number of calories your body burns every single day. So by moving more in your daily life, you will see huge improvements in your metabolism. So I invite you to look for more opportunities to move throughout the day. Park your car further from the entrance of the office or the grocery store. Take stairs instead of the elevator. Walk around your house during a phone call. Get on your Peloton during a phone call, (laughs) whatever you got to do. Do 20 squats during a three minute work break. The more you move, the more calories you burn. So let's make 2022 the year that we add in more walks and more steps and create more metabolic flexibility and longevity. Thank you so much for listening in on the Essentially You podcast. This show, as always, is about providing you tools to rock your hormones and feel amazing in your body. Now, if there's someone who needs to hear this message today, that walking is the bee's knees, take a moment, screenshot this episode, send it on over to them, or share it on social. And if you share it on social, hashtag hormone literacy or hormone CEO. Until the next episode, have an amazing day.